Hi, I'm Porfirio Chavarria, Wildland Urban Interface Specialist for the City of Santa Fe Fire Department. Today we're going to show you our SIM table, which is a great tool that we use for our fire department responders as a training tool, but we can also use it for homeowners to show them what a fire would look like on the landscape if there was a fire right in their backyard. Okay. So it's loading up Monte Sereno, so it's only showing Monte Sereno stuff. We've got uh, 285, 84 going uh, north out of town. We have our base layers, which kind of, uh, you know, this is using being hybrid for the, to show the, the satellite imagery, but I could show Esri's map or some of these other, other maps. This is the really fun part. You can come in here and you can kind of see <laughs> The shape, you can kind of see some of the shape that's going up. You know, this looks, the darker green is higher. This is blue is a lot lower. You can kind of see the, uh, the drainages through here. And I can make it rain, let's say mild. And I'll just throw water on here. All this overlays are some of the other things. So I can put, you know, what federal, I can put land areas on there, um, fuel models, kind of, this kind of gives you the streets. Annotations is kind of neat to show because we've actually added, last year or the year before, we went and did home assessments. Right. When I put on annotations, you can see those home assessments out here. So, so the blues are moderate and the orange are high fire danger. So you can see I can send an engine out to a house and see, you know, see what's going on there. Because the model is running. If you notice on the bottom of there, uh, there there's a clock running and it's going in minutes and it's, it's multiplied by 512 times. So that's why my engine moves really fast. Let's say, I don't know, 25, 28? That's probably reasonable for on, you know, on a windy yeah. spring oh, yeah. day. Let's say a car pulls off the road because they have car trouble and their car starts on fire. They throw out a cigarette or something. Well, so maybe they start a cigarette. It's at you know, five hours without any, of our, any inf intervention whatsoever. Is that realistic? With a 22 mile an hour wind pushing this thing south, that's very realistic of what you could expect. As a community, looking to the future, what would you recommend we continue yeah. to do mm -hmm. going forward? What's going to make the most impact? Yeah. So the, the biggest impact that I see most of the time is the stuff right around structures. So what you're doing right around your structure most likely is going to protect that home like five different treatments. So at 10% density, 20, 30, 40, 50, I believe is what we ended up with. And at some point it's gonna hit that 10% wall and just not do anything anymore. And as you can see, it's not, you know, it's slowing down over here when yeah. it starts getting to that, uh, you know, 40% density of fuels or so. That is dramatic <clears throat> right, to see it actually slow down like that. Yeah, and I, uh, the issue right here is, right there. is taking a type one engine, one of our fire trucks out here, through that road, because it goes like this and like this. I think one of the most important things back today for me was to see visually what a fire when it spreads, how fast that goes and why it goes. I wish every homeowner had the opportunity to see this demonstration. I think the primary benefit that I saw from the demonstration was bringing people together public awareness aspect of this whole thing and how each one of us can contribute to cleaning up the properties and preventing forest fires in the future.